Hello, and welcome to our virtual 2021 Summer Library Program. Our theme this year is Tales and Tales, T-A-I-L-S, referring to animal tales, like a dog or cat or a mouse would have, and T-A-L-E-S, referring to stories. So we are going to have the best time this summer, learning about animals, reading about them, and just sharing stories that are going to be so incredible. If you um, are not already registered, we have a few more spaces for a few more children, and you'll be getting um, a bag like this the first two weeks that says Tales and Tales. And inside the bag will be um, a calendar of events. There'll be a letter telling about all the things that are going to happen this summer and how to access them. And um, there'll be a program packet for each week. This is the program packet for week one. And along with the program packet, you'll get a craft pack. This one is a wooden animal craft, and this one has a baboon in it. I made some samples. This is a unicorn, and a unicorn, they, I did it with different, this one was done with watercolors, crayons, and markers, just to show you some ideas of what you could do with your animal craft. So every week that um, we have this program during June and hopefully into July, we'll have crafts, we'll have activities that you can pick up from the library, and we're just gonna have a great time. And each Tuesday, we'll be posting a program. It will be on our Facebook page, and also it will be um, on our website and on our um, um, YouTube channel. So you can watch it in any of those ways whenever it's convenient for you and you can do the activities at a time that is convenient for you. So we welcome you to our virtual 2021 Summer Library Program. Um, due to um, a small space here in our library, we're uh, continuing to have virtual programs, which means they'll be posted online uh, and can be viewed there. Each week, we're gonna read and learn about different aspects of the animal kingdom that surrounds us. Um, we humans, did you know that we humans share planet Earth with millions of animals? And these animals may be large or small. They may live in different places and in a variety of ways. They might live on land or in the, in the water. They could live on a mountaintop or in a desert. They live in many different places and in many different ways. Animals may be tame like your family pet. If you have a dog or a cat, or some other type of family pet that's tame and that you enjoy sharing time with. Or animals may be wild and dangerous, like lions and tigers and bears that would be found out in um, other places. We, don't, we wouldn't see a lion or a tiger where we live because they're not native to our area. Some animals are native to our area and we see them around us every day. I bet you can name quite a few animals that you can see um, maybe just outside your home or as you're driving somewhere, we can see animals and insects and um, all sorts of life every day if we just open our eyes and look. If you go outside, you might see birds, worms, ants, squirrels, insects, and other animals just looking around where you live. Some animals that do not live in our area are rare for us to see because they are not native. They do not live here. Elephants, monkeys, zebras, koalas, and other exotic animals are not native to our area, so we would normally only see these in a zoo or on TV. But no matter where or how animals live, they are truly amazing. And we're going to share some stories today about how amazing animals are. book we're going to read is What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? This book was written by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page, and it's published by Houghton Mifflin and Company. Animals use their noses, ears, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find out more about these animals. 
What do you do with a nose like this? Who can guess what kind of animal this nose belongs to? An elephant, right? And this looks like it could be a dog or a bear. Here we go. If you were a platypus, you would use your nose to dig in the mud. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. If you're an elephant, you know, use your nose to give yourself a bath. If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. And if you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while you're hiding in the water. What do you do with ears like this? If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep you cool. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. And if you're a, if you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. Those are some pretty impressive ears, aren't they? And what do you do with a tail like this? Let's find out. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. If you're a skunk, you use your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on its way. When the skunk lifts its tail, you better get out of the way. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. You see the lizard's tail is broken off, but it can grow back. If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. And if you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. What do you do with eyes like these? If you're an eagle, you can spot tiny animals from high in the air. If you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. And if you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. You see all of these animals? Ooh, what do you do with feet like these? If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. Have you ever tried to feed yourself with your feet? I don't think it would work too well. If you're a water striker, you walk on water with your feet. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance with your feet. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. And if you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. What do you do with a mouth like this? If you're a pelican, you, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. If you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. See the anteater? If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. If you're a snake, you can eat a whole egg with your mouth. And if you're an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. See the archer fish? This is a very neat book about the unusual body parts of animals, and it's available in our library if you want to come check it out. I hope you enjoyed it.
This is another book by Steve Jenkins, the author of the previous book we just read, and it's called Actual Size. And it is published also by Houghton Mifflin and Company. And it shows the actual size of things, different types of animals or parts of animals. This is an atlas moth. Look how large that is. It's so large that it is often mistaken for a bird. Did you ever look a giant squid in the eye? Have you ever shaken hands with a gorilla or been face to face with a tiger? All of the animals in this book are shown at actual size so you can see how you measure up to creatures both large and small. The dwarf goby is the smallest of fish. Can you see that tiny little fish down there at the bottom? That's a very small animal. But look at this. That's the eye of a giant squid. It lives deep in the ocean where its enormous eyes help it to see in the dim light. This eye is 12 inches across the eye of the giant squid. Oh, look how big this head is. This is an Alaskan brown bear. It has the lar it's the largest meat-eating animal that lives on land. He is very big, isn't he? Here's the largest bird, an ostrich with its egg. It grows up to nine feet tall and weighs 300 and can weigh up to 340 pounds. Look at this tongue. Can you see how long that is? That's very long. A two foot long tongue. This must be a giant anteater snacking on its favorite food, termites. Oh my goodness. This is a giant tarantula, a Goliath bird eater tarantula. It is big enough to catch and eat birds and small mammals. It is 12 inches across. That's pretty scary looking. And how about this creature? A saltwater crocodile. It is so big. Can you see that? It's very long. It's the world's largest reptile and it's a man eater. It can grow 23 feet long and this is how big its mouth is. It is huge. The Goliath frog lives in Africa. It's big enough to catch and eat birds and rats. It is 36 inches or three feet long with legs extended and weighs seven pounds. Look how big he is. The Goliath frog that lives in Africa. I don't think we would know what to do with a, with a frog that we found that was that big. This is too close to a great white shark. My goodness, can you see how big those teeth are? They're almost as big as my head. It grows. One last book we want to share today is Animals That Make Me Say, Ooh, by Ranger Rick. This book is written by Don Cusick and published by Imagine Publishing. And it has a lot of very interesting information in it. Welcome to the world that will make you say, Ooh. We share Earth with millions of animals, but unlike our family pets, Animals in the wild have to take care of themselves. The gross things that they do are usually adaptations that help them to survive. We're going to look at just two or three pages in here. One is, I imagine when you eat your dinner, um, your mother or grandmother or whoever's at the table with you gives you a napkin or something to wipe your mouth if you get food on your face. Well, this animal, lots of mammals, this is an antelope and a dog. Mammals often rub their tongues over their noses. You're a mammal too. 
How often do you clean your nose with your tongue? I hope you never do that. These animals may be using their tongues like napkins, cleaning up leftover tidbits from dinner. It's also possible that animals are adding moisture to their noses, which can help them cool off and smell better. That is interesting, but please don't try to clean your mouth with your tongue after dinner. Here's another interesting fact. How does rolling, splashing, and lounging in the mud help keep animals clean? For mammals such as warthogs, rhinos, and elephants, which have little or no fur, mud helps to protect their bodies from the sun's rays and cools them off as the mud cakes, small skin parasites fall off. So here you see the white rhinoceros, the warthog, and the elephant. The wrinkly skin of elephants, rhinos, and hippos is an adaptation to hot habitats. The extra surface area these wrinkles provide helps the animals release more body heat. When mud gets between the wrinkles in their skin, the mud moisture, mud's moisture can cool them off for many hours. So who would have thought that rolling around in the mud would be good for animals, but it is. And when there's no mud, it says in a pinch, when there's no mud nearby, elephants may spray themselves with dust for protection from the sun's rays. How do elephants keep from getting dust too far up their noses? Thousands of nerve cells tell their brains where the dust is, and their brains tell their nose muscles when to stop, when to stop and start sneezing. Other animals that may roll in the dust are the zebra and the ostrich. If you do not have a trunk, rolling on the ground in the dusty spot will get the job done. Many kinds of animals take dust baths to remove parasites or pieces of dead skin from their fur or feathers, including zebras, horses, rabbits, squirrels, swallows, quail, and some other birds. Some birds, some animals like the squirrel, take a sun bath. Sunlight helps to kill bacteria and other germs in their fur, feathers, and scales. So, this is another very interesting book that you can check out from the library, Animals That Make Me Say Ooh. I hope you've enjoyed our three books that we spotlighted today, and I hope that you will enjoy this story time and learn and, and study and find out more about animals with books from the library. Come to see us soon.